uh, the artist duo Herakut from Germany. That's Hera, I'm Akut. And we are happy to be back in Los Angeles, our actually second home. The title of our show this year is of Warriors and Warriors. It's our third show with Corey Halford Gallery. Everyone who saw the previous show will notice that this show is um, has a completely different feel to it. It's it's way more upbeat, I think, and it's it's a reflection of what we feel right now. So emotional self portraits uh, portraits of us. It's our stance towards what's coming on um, in the future. It's that we want to position ourselves um, not as warriors, but as warriors, really. Because we've been worrying so much that that kind of um, drained us. It really drained us. The last thing we want to be is um, being our age now and being depressed. It's kind of we've been past that and we want we want to fight and we want to support um, the movement that has been started by very young people, um, Friday, Fridays for Future, um, lots of young people who, were, who are righteously concerned about where this planet is heading and what we're doing with nature and we, we want to support them. Mr. Lehman, <laughs> next to me, he, he's a father now. Um, a dad of three. That definitely affects the way we work these days. There is something very, this element of I'm taking care of you, like you know, you, 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 you paint a character but you, you kind of hug it in a, in a different way. They're not sexy and kinky and that kind of stuff. They're more fragile or just lovable. So it, it's a completely different side of us, I think, in this time. And um, that definitely has to do with new life situations, with um, babies being around us and, and toddlers learning to talk and walk. I think uh, a big difference from this show to the last shows is that we uh, have kind of a strong contrast between very fragile skin texture and hard and very resist metal stuff. So this is something which comes on a lot of pieces together on one canvas where you really see uh, a fragile human being covered with uh, a strong child, shield. Or shield, what, yeah, shield, armor. Armor, yeah. things like this. So this is really uh, something which is... Technique-wise, the big... Te Technique-wise, not, uh, not unusual, but uh, it's something like... Uh, uh, the red line in, in, in mm. this body of work. Yeah, so Akut's work, Falk, Falk's work is, um, you know, the photorealism. Um, and he really, uh, he spent hours on some of those pieces um, making metal look three dimensional. And uh, that's, for, you know, technically, you, when you think about the spray cans that he uses, it's amazing and I'm so glad that's not my job. <laughs> so I'm really glad but that it, it's um, that's new and that's it's a it's a thread that goes you know that it, it's the warrior the, the the warrior armor that we're applying to, as you know as a cover as a shield. Um, it's probably it stands for it, although it's medieval armory, it, it's just a symbol for um, a way to, to protect yourself um, from whatever is coming. And it's, you don't see weapons. That's another very important detail. So we put our creatures, we geared them up in, in armor, but it's only, it's only to shield them from, from um, uh, aggression. They, none of them carry anything hurtful or that harmful, sorry, harmful. Um, for this uh, free looser canvases, um, it's actually um, 
kind of a long-term series where we work on since a couple of years. We call them family members. And uh, now we added these three ones to our family. And it's actually um, human characters with animal heads. And this time we took uh, three animals which are on the wet list. So and uh, it's definitely fitting to our uh, show concept. And uh, they are also the last paintings we added to the show so they are very fresh you still can smell the new color yeah, yeah. and uh, they are kind of also the loose ones they are really concentrated focus on this uh, family member topic yes yeah, so you um you see uh what do we have uh it was a lynx an otter and a gray wolf yeah. um and they're all connected to very cute faces and, and um, like school children faces. And um, yeah, it's, it, all of them are kind of, and um, yeah, it's, it, all of them are kind of saying, you know, please take care of us. Make sure we survive this day. So um, this is actually the, the the first body of work where we uh, use our new model, which is new uh, in our family, my little son. So and uh, we painted him in the last month uh, on a few walls, but this is now the first one that we use his photos as reference to uh, bring it in the scenario on a canvas. And so this is very unique and very new for me to, to see it. So it's of course uh, makes it more special. Yeah, and. He, um, he plays the role of a unicorn child um, being held by its, by its mom. And that's also one thing I'm witnessing because uh, Carl Henry Lehman, our new um, member, basically is, is one of those kids that have it real good because they're very, very loved and protected. Um, so, and especially because he's growing up in, in Berlin these days, which is an awesome place to grow up. So, so tolerant and so um, still artful and just wonderful. So he is so special in this world. That's why he wears the, the headpiece of a unicorn because, you know, that it's going to be very rare um, at some point because he doesn't grow up with hate. When you look at the canvas, the, the wording, it's actually a quote from... Um, Forrest Gump, because he was, he, he is the most innocent guy, I guess, um, portrayed uh, in, in film, well, at least for, for me he was, um, he was always that unicorn, kind of. So that's why um, there's this quote where it's, he, he says, uh, Mama always had a way of explaining things so I could understand them. And that's, it's just so cute. It's like, what do you tell uh, um, a unicorn? when you talk about um, this planet's future. <laughs> Yeah, this canvas is a kind of a modern version, interpretation of Vermeer's piece, uh, the girl with the earring. Pearl earring. Pearl earring. So, but um, it's really a uh, have a good interpretation. It's uh, very much. Very much, yeah. You uh, and this is also a good sample for our uh, for our our dynamic, which we try to find in our techniques and uh, the mixing of our techniques. So you really have the big contrast between the very loose lines and uh, the fine structure and the realism. And it's, and it's interesting because um, we started, when we had our first real breakthrough basically, we, um, we used a female character with bunny ears and that was published a lot and then we had a show in London and then we had all these uh, bunny girls but they when you compare them it's it's insane that they're even from the same family it's just 
it's so interesting for us to see this. And so basically we moved from, um, from the bunny, the Harakut bunny, um, being still, you know, a little on the sexy side to using the same idea, you know, a woman and mask and rabbit ears, but making it much more classic, like much, you know, giving it much more depth and making it actually elegant. So there is this, this piece that I really, really like because um, the, the way we started is very traditional, uh, very loose lines and just um, finding a very dynamic body pose of, of a female and she, the way she twists and turns is just also, you know, kind of over the top um, body language. And she's naked. And then she has these, this wavy hair. But that's a very good example for our kind of work because the, what you see, um, the, the arrangement of, of the, the characters in the piece, and then um, the text, that's a big stretch there. And to bring those two together, that's really what, what we're, we sort of specialized in because that's where the humor is. Because the text, you, you see this blonde woman and she's holding three cups, uh, grizzly cups. Um, and it, it reads though, imagine a world in which Goldilocks had never invaded the bear's home, ate their food, and broke their furniture. So it's really that, that, that question. What if people had never in, invaded a land that belonged to wild animals? And then they were complaining, you know, about, um, oh, their bed is too hard and their food's not good and let's shoot them. <laughs> let's shoot them all. So it's kind of, you know, now after all these centuries, um, Goldilocks ancestor, uh, not ancestors, uh, Goldilocks um, uh, grandchildren still haven't thought of reparation <laughs> you know they they're still buying armor and chasing the grizzly bears out of yellowstone park um so that's it <laughs>